Praise the Lord. Yes. What else? Good. Good stuff. All right, well, let's get into the Word. Yeah. If you're in Bibles, we're going to jump all over the place. So, uh, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, like I said, I was surprised at 11 o'clock that I was going to preach. Um, I was pretty excited about um, here having a speaker, Austin Brown, and then he texted me while I was at the conference saying, hey, you're going to preach. Uh, and I went, okay, thank you, Jesus. Stretched me. And, uh, and that morning I, I read a devotional on you version. That's where I go. And I usually post on the, our Facebook page, the church Facebook page, from my one year uh, devotional. And if you notice, I did not do that yesterday because you're going to hear it today. Amen. Um, so this is where I'm getting my the premise of what I'm preaching you, to you today. <laughs> So, um, so this is the idea. Um, I, I did take the premise from faith, from you version, but it's going to be a lot of me, okay? Amen. And so, I don't do well with surprises, but I do well with um, gleaning from wisdom. You know, I had a Presbyterian pastor who going to be willing to give me his sermon, so... <laughs> I thought this would be a whole lot better if I yeah. gave you a lot of me and a little bit of somebody else. So, okay? Come on. So, develop kononia with God. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a cool... But when I when I looked up the Greek, uh, in the Greek Bible, and I realized what it meant, the title of the devotional was Developing Intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a cool title, but I liked the word kononia. Okay? It just sounds a whole lot cooler. You know... Are, are you Come awake? On. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Colonia, as we get to the next screen, this is how it looks like. It means fellowship. It's, this is how it's spelled. It's participation, communion, or fellowship. Next screen. Um, I like it because it's, it's sharing in or contributing, but spiritual fellowship, which indicates a deepness. This is my prayer every morning for our church, that we as a church have deep fellowship or deep intimacy or deep kononia with the Lord every day, that on Sunday morning we just don't hold back. We have a deepness with the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we, we say, we, we hear the prayers every week, or we hear prayers and we pray. We want to see God move so bad in church, don't we? Yes, we yes. want to see God move, but if we don't have a deepness with God in our own life, right. how do we expect God to move? That's right. If we are not hungry for something, to, for God to move, he, He's not going to move. Right. We're going to see Him move past. The Bible talks in Revelation about the river of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Come on. And, and, and we can sit there on the bank of the river of God and look at it and say, oh, that's a nice river. If we don't jump into it, we're never going to experience. Amen. So if we just look at it and say, oh, that's a nice river, it's just like if you're fishing and you have your fishing pole and you have all the right tools and you never put the fish hook into the river, you'll never catch a fish. You have the right tools. The Holy Spirit is with you. But if you never engage the power of God, you're never going to really see what the fullness of what God has for you. Amen. This is what is happening in the church today. We have everything that God has for us, but we never truly engage what God has for us. We sit there, we have the great, wonderful movement of God. We sing about, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome here. But sometimes we go, God, You are here, but hold on a minute. We want You here, but we want You on our time frame. This is not even in my notes. We want to have deep spiritual, we want Kononia with You, but we want it in our definition. We want it in our idea. 
We want it in our concept. It's just like God has given us the tools. He has given us the, I, the want to, but we haven't got the desire. Yeah. There's a big difference. We can have the want to all you want, but unless we have that desire, that deep spiritual fellowship, do you know the difference? I can have the desire to do something, but until I do it, they engage it, then we'll never have it. It's like, you have to, how many of you guys drove to church today? Right? You came to church. Well, or you walked, which is great. I walked to church today, too. I don't live around the corner. Praise Jesus. But you had to do something to get here. Right. So, if you drove here, you had to do a couple things. You got, you woke up, and then you came to church, fell asleep. No, you got up, you got dressed, praise Jesus. You, you got the keys to your car. You walked out to your car, you opened the door, you put, you sat down, you put the key in the ignition, you started the motor, and you moved the car. We closed the doors. You moved the car. Uh, hopefully, if it was parked in the garage, you opened the garage door, and you backed up, and you drove down the road, all these things, and whatever you did in the midst of this, I'm making this up as I go along. But you had to do something. You had to put it in drive that engaged the motor that it made it move. See, if you didn't put the drive in it, to engage the motor, it did not move. Sometimes we as Christians, we come to church, but we never put in drive to engage Amen. because we're so still sitting in neutral waiting for somebody else to hit it in drive. Yes. <laughs> and we don't engage because we, we're not so sure that we're ready for the drive to you. It's like when, when someone first gets their license, they're not so sure if they're ready to drive. Church, God has given us the tools already. God has put the river of God to flow, but we, we say we want revival, but we're sitting on the bank going, I don't really know if I really want to go. Maybe it's too cold. It's time that we engage and have spiritual development, spiritual deepness, konania with the, the, with, the, with the Lord. So let's talk about developing it this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. <coughs> John Wimber... Uh, uh, American pastor, he said this, the ability to hear what God is saying, to see what God is doing, to move in the realm of the miraculous comes as an individual develop of the same intimacy with the dependence upon the Father as Jesus had. Right. How did Jesus do what he did? Uh, we look at John 14.12. Here's what John 14.12 says. It says, Verily very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. Hallelujah. We, by discovering the same relationship by intimacy and simplicity and obedience, God will move. We have to understand there has to be a movement we have to develop a movement, a, a desire, a hunger for the things of God. Amen? Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. So let's jump into this. Number one, we have to have an openness mm -hmm. with vulnerability and honesty. Mm -hmm. Psalms 35, 11 through 18 says this. Ruthless witness comes forward. They question me on things I know nothing about. They repay me evil for good and leave me like one bereaved. Yet when I, they will, were ill, I put on sackcloth and humble myself with fasting. When my prayers returned to me unanswered, I went about mourning as though my, for my friend or brother. I bowed my head in grief as though weeping for my brother. But when I stumble, they gather in glee. Assailants gather against me without my knowledge. They slander me without ceasing. Like the ungodly, they maliciously mock. They gnash their teeth at me. Are we having fun yet? Oh, yeah. yes. How long, Lord, will you look on me, rescue me from their ravage, my precious life from these lions? 
I will give thanks in the great assembly among the throngs. I will praise you. Yeah. Sounds like a great day, right? Sounds like the world. Right? Yeah, right. See, we're looking at, here's David. He was down. Duh, right? He was feeling, his soul was feeling empty. Look at verse 12 in the message. It should be up here. Is that it? Is that the message? I don't have that in my notes. There we go. They pay me back misery for mercy, leaving my soul empty. Yeah. Yeah. He was honest and open enough to talk about his challenges. Do you know that God can handle your openness? Yes. That's right. He can handle that your honesty with the Lord. He can handle what you're saying. See, here's David, he's, he's, if you, you're taking notes, this would be like, A, opposition. See, David was faced with great opposition from those who repaid evil for good and attacked him. See, you are also faced with great opposition from those who repay evil for good and attack you. See, they may slander you or they maliciously mock you. Opposition does not, opposition does not only come through the world, it, it comes from even from God's people. Sometimes. Sometimes. Amen. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Sometimes. In the church today, we see that. If we want to go a little bit further, we find that there's even unanswered prayers. We see in Psalms 35, it mentions that even, even unanswered prayers happen. We come to the idea that if God really cares, He will answer every prayer. Do you know God does, He loves us so much and sometimes He knows what's best for us. He does know what's best for us. And we may be praying and He knows the time to answer all prayers. And He has a perfect plan. That's right. So why do we think that He doesn't know what's good for us? We have prayed probably some crazy prayers, haven't we? God, I need that new Mercedes Benz. <coughs> I used to pray, Lord God, I need a cherry red S turbo saw. <laughs> I was very specific. I wanted a cherry red S turbo saw. I would look cool in that. I never got it on answered prayers. That sounds, that doesn't sound so spiritual, does it? But sometimes we pray for people to be healed, and we look at that and say, God, why didn't you, why is that an unanswered prayer? God, if you really cared about that person, you would have healed that person. Why is that? We get frustrated sometimes because God didn't answer that prayer just the way we thought he should. Do you know that God that is not a drive through window? And he doesn't do it the way he, we think he should. I believe God can heal anyone who he wants to heal in the perfect way he wants to heal it. Now, that's my belief. And the deal is this. Is, is sometimes we come to the Lord and we pray us this direction. And God has a different direction. And we call it an unanswered prayer. And we get all frustrated with it because he did not do what we thought he should do. God, I didn't win that lottery ticket. <laughs> you know I need that money. You know what I hear what God says? Get a job. My thing was, Verse 17 really brings it out to me. In the message, it says this. God, how long are you going to stand there doing nothing? 
Save me from these brutalities. Yeah, thank you. Everything I've got is being thrown to the lions. Yeah. Okay. Note C. Failure. David here is feeling failure. You say, how can we develop koinonia if we feel failure? Church, I've been a pastor for 23 years. I've been married 23 years, been a pastor for 22. I felt failure. A lot. Scared of failure. I want to be one of those successful pastors that is on TBN. Just kidding. <laughs> I want to have the TBN hairdo. Just kidding. But you know what? I don't have to be successful in people's eyes. I'm success, successful in God's eyes. Yes. Yeah. But as human as I am, I feel failure quite a bit when I don't measure up. I love it. My wife, I told my wife that I, I used my, this devotional I read, and she leaned over and says, when you get up tomorrow morning and you preach, don't apologize. Because you're a great preacher. And I says, well, thanks. Yes. Because if I was one of those great preachers, I could just pull a sermon together and preach. You know, I could open my Bible and say, oh, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, dove flows down from heaven. And just, you know, it doesn't happen like that for me. I'm not a Benny Hinn. I'm not a, you know, uh, whoever you great preachers out there. I'm just a guy who stands in front of a group of great people and look at the Word of God and says, look, David went through a hard time. If David can go through a hard time, you know what? We can go through a hard time too. Yeah. That's right. And you know what? That's okay. As long as we trust the Lord with all our heart, mind, and soul, and we do what He's called us to do, and we say, thank you, Jesus, that we get to go through hard times too. Amen. 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 So let's jump to number two. Because when we get to number three, you might just sit back and maybe fall asleep. Because number three gets a little bit longer. Number two is growing wisdom. The Bible says that we can ask for wisdom on anything. Amen? Amen. So Luke 2, 41 to 52 says this. The boy Jesus goes into the temple. That's what my Bible says. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover, and when he was 12 years old, he went into the festival according to the custom, and after the festival was over, while his parents was returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it, thinking he was in their company. They traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like that? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Did you not know I would be in my father's house? But they did not answer what he, understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in, his, in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in the favor of, with God and man. See, even the child Jesus had astonishing wisdom. The Amplified Bible in verse 47 says this, And all who heard him was astonished and overwhelmed with bewildered wonder at his intelligence and understanding of his, at his replies. As someone once said, he's knowing is knowing that a tomato is fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad, 
Now it's just horizontal. With <clears> this <throat> vertical. Jesus, parents find him in the temple courts, and he said to them, "Did you not know that I would be in my Father's house?" Where the message translate, dealing with the things of my Father. Wisdom comes from listening. Wisdom is the will willingness to listen and to learn from others. Jesus was sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Sir Isaac Newton said, I find intelligence is better spotting when analyzing the questions asked rather than answered, answers given. President John F. Kennedy said that he made you think that he had nothing else to do except ask you questions and listen with extraordinary concentrations to your answers. Wisdom leads to simplicity. Wisdom brings clarity. So when you think about wisdom, you get it from God. and You begin to ask questions. You learn from God. You get in His Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. How do you get relationship? You read his word. That's right. Wisdom should get you to grow. Yeah. This past week, I'm, I'm part of a leadership roundtable. Every Friday morning, I meet with a bunch of leaders from our community. And, and we're about ready to read a book. And, 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 and I, we get to pick a book every month. And this next book we're getting ready to read is written by the AG Missionaries, which I'm really stoked about. Uh, it's called The Next 24. It's, it's all about compassion ministry. It's written by the guy who does real compassion. I'm pretty stoked. But they they picked the book out, and they said, we're going to read this book, and they told me what it was all about. And I went and researched the author. The author went by, by himself wasn't that bad. So I started going digging a little deep, and I read the first chapter of this book, and I started looking at it, and it was all about your mind. I love minds. Minds are pretty cool things to study. But then I started reading about who forwarded this stuff on this book. And it all became, became talking about Zen Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, time out. Because in this group, there's a lot of different kinds of leaders. And I just kind of, okay, God, I can't participate in this study of this book. Two reasons. Biggest one is I'm a follower of Christ, mm -hmm. not a Buddha. <laughs> so I went to the leader of the thing. I says, I, I respect you, but I will not be participating in the study of this book if we do this. I will bow out for a month, and you guys study the book. That's what you guys get to choose to do. Um, and she kind of totally understood what I was talking about. They chose not to study the book, and they respectfully chose a different book. I don't always pick the books. I don't pick religious books. We study a lot of different books, but I just couldn't study that book for the premise of what my belief system is. So, wisdom. Mm -hmm. we, can, we don't have to rely on, we can ask God for wisdom, amen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we should grow in it. We shouldn't just say, well, it's no big deal. But we should grow in it. But we should trust in the Holy Spirit. We should trust in God. How we wisdom should grow. Through his intimate relation with God, Jesus grew in wisdom and statue, mm -hmm. in favor with God and with people, verse 52. That's right. We see this same description in 1 Samuel 2.26, if you bring that up. It says, And the boy Samuel continued to grow in the statue in favor of the Lord, with the Lord with, and with people. So he kept on growing in wisdom. Yes. I won't bore you with a whole lot, but the next one is, number three is this. Is stand still and listen. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you ever dealt with a hyperactive kid, <laughs> they can never stand still. Anybody ever deal with a hyperactive kid? Okay, okay. you're dealing with one right now. <laughs> I cannot usually stand still. I have to be moving. If you ever see me sometimes while you're talking to me, I, I'm looking around. <coughs> My wife, when we go out to eat, she usually has to sit me looking at a wall because I'm watching people. <laughs> if I go to an airport 
I sit looking at people because I love watching people. My eyes are always watching. If you come to my house, I will sit on the front porch, and you may be talking to me, but I'm looking everywhere. Because I don't want to be shot. No, I'm just kidding. Because I like watching people. I went on a mission trip, and I told the whole mission trip that I watched them. I can tell you what they're doing. Because that's, I know that just sounds creepy, but that's what I do. I watch people. I cannot stop watching people. I think people are the most interesting people to watch. <laughs> Why? Because we're weird. We have mannerisms. We do things that are just out of the ordinary. We do things that just, uh, just weird. And, okay, now you just think your pastor's just creepy. He watches people. But that's what I do. That's how I get illustrations. So if you think I'm talking about you, I'm really not. But I watch people. I'm a people watcher. I watch people when I drive. Yes, yeah. even when I'm going on the highway, I watch people. It's very weird because I watch when I pass. The fact is, we are, sometimes you just got to just engage people. All right. Now you know I'm weird. If you didn't know that before. So here we have number seven, 66 to 914. A lot of things are happening here. And it's a long passage of scripture. And it's, it's like days. <laughs> days. So we're going to drop you down. And I'm going to drop you way over. And I hope you can find this in the notes. Uh, stand still. Everything's happening up to the Passover. We're getting ready for Easter. In chapter 9, 14 verses. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert. We're leading up to, we're, I mean, chapter 7, 8, we're leading up to the Passover. So it's, it's coming up. I mean, you got a lot of things going on. Here's verse nine, chapter 9, starting with verse 1. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year of, after they camped out in Egypt. He said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of the month in accordance to all the rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of the Sinai, the twilight, twelfth. On the 14th day of the first month, the Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. But some of them could not celebrate the Passover on the day because they were ceremonially unclean on the account of a, of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron the same day and said, Moses, we have become unclean because of the dead body, but why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering? with the other Israelites at the appointed time. Moses said to them, Wait until I find out with what the Lord's commands concerning you. The Lord, then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, When any of you or your descendants are unclean because of the dead body or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover. But they are to do it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight, they are, to eat, they are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if any, of, any who is ceremonially unclean are not on the journey and fails to celebrate the Passover, they must cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offering at the appointed time. They, they bear the consequences of their sin. A foreigner residing among you is to celebrate the Lord's Passover in accordance to the regulations, rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native born. Aren't you glad I read all of it? <laughs> so in this whole thing, you cannot develop, if you read the whole thing, you cannot develop an intimate relationship with God without setting aside a time to communicate with him. That's true. See, they had a tent of meeting at the beginning, speaking with the Lord. He heard the voice speaking to him and spoke to him. The Lord said to Moses, 
in, in verses 7, 8 to 8, 9, 89 to 8, 1. He heard. They had a communication. Remember, we see Moses was speaking to the Lord. God spoke to Moses, 8, 1 and 9, 1. Moses spoke with God, 7, 8, 9. It was a two-day conversation, two-way conversation. God spoke to Moses face-to-face -face as a person speaks to with a friend, talking and listening at the same time, watching for each one's reaction. In, in the age of the Holy Spirit, you are in an even better position than Moses. Right. You no longer have to go to a particular place like Moses did, but can be with God wherever you are. Right. Yeah. By the Spirit of adoption, you are brought into an intimate and eternal conversation with God the Hallelujah. Father. Amen. We, we come sometimes forget how important, how vital we have that we can speak to the Father at any time. Amen. Amen. It's so important that we do not negate the importance of having a relationship with the Father. Amen? Amen. 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 Let me close this out with this. Eugene Peterson, the, right, the one that translated the, the word into the message, he says this in verse 8. He says, Moses said, give me some time and I'll find out what God says in your circumstances. He went to the Father. Moses was the leader at the time. Here's the deal. You can go on your own behalf nowadays and speak to the Father. The Amplified puts it this way, stand still and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. In the business of life, stand still and listen to what God wants you to do. Right. Amen. Stand still. We live in a business of life. If Kony is so important, having that deep relationship with God, sometimes we just need to stand still and listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to God, what He's saying, because church, He's still lit, He's still speaking. Amen. We just have to stop, drop, and listen. Amen. Sometimes we just need to come to a point and say, God, your child is listening. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just need to take a point and say, I'm pastor, is the church open? No. Can I get your key? Can I come and pray? Because right. you know what? I'll give you the key. You come and pray. If, that, if that's what you need, I've, I came here and there's been people sitting, there, there's been an individual sitting on the front stoop just praying because they needed a place to pray. And I was okay with that because you know what? This is a place of prayer. Yeah. If, if, you, if there's too much going on in your house because you've got too many distractions, come to the house and pray. Hey, I found places on my bike where I'll be riding in the in outside and I can pray there. Why do we have to wait to pray? God says that we can pray and we can meet with Him anytime, any place, anywhere. Amen. Again, back to the river of God. We're on the bank. What are we waiting for? Okay. He's given us the tools. It's time for our church to jump in. It's time for our church to see God move and take us deeper. He's given us the tools. <coughs> so let's experience God. Amen. Let's have that deep fellowship like never before. Amen. Because he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to have that deep spiritual relationship with us. Yes. We just have to have it with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for the time that we have. Thank you for this message. Thank you for challenging us. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we just desire to hear from you. Church, maybe you're here this morning. You, you are just kind of lost. Because it's been a while since you've had felt that deep relationship with the Father. You love the Lord. But you just kind of not had that koinonia, that fellowship. And today you just need to rekindle that relationship.
definitely.